This is a video tutorial part of my uh, CP table view, uh, or I'm sorry, my uh, Cappuccino web framework series. This time we're talking about CP table view, um, and I have prepared some code uh, just to show you, and then we'll uh, work, uh, play around with it a little bit, and then also um, I'll show you at least one of the uh, important delegate methods for the CP table view. Um, so this is my code. This is just a standard cappuccino project. Um, so yeah, uh, so we start off by initial or uh, defining three uh, instance variables: a scroll view, CP scroll view, um, a CP table view called table view, and CP array called data. And data is just storing all of the uh, uh, like strings for each row. Once we go into our application, did finish launching, we have the first uh, two lines of that are the standard. Um, when you start a cappuccino project, it's uh, the window variable and content view variable. Uh, and so basically, for a CP table view, in order for the column, the table columns to show up, you have to put the table view itself within a scroll view. So um, up here in our instance variables we do have that scroll view and here we're, we're allocating it cp scroll view allocating it with frame and we're just going to have a, f a full screen or full window um, uh, table view meaning that the scroll view that the table view, view will be within has to be um, the the bounds of the content view so we in it with frame content view bounds and then table view you can um, in it with frame uh, here uh, scroll view bounds or CGREC makes zero uh, makes zero works as well because when uh, down here right here when we set the document view of the scroll view um, to the table view um, the table view should be uh, automatically resized to the scroll views size so you can just end it with frame CGREC makes zero if you want um, and then we have uh, I'm just making it so that the uh, rows alternate colors, and we do that by doing set uses alternating ba row background colors, yes. Um, and then we get down into, uh, we define our data array variable, so CP array alloc in it, and then we add two objects, um, very simple there, two strings, I might add, and then uh, here uh, we are defining a column. Um, we call that variable the columns, and then we say CP table view or t CP table column alloc in it with identifier, and identifier can be um, of any type, so it can be an integer, whatever. In this case, I'm just using a string, and uh, it's the column, same as the variable name, and then uh, we have to define the header view of this column, so we uh, call the header view method on the column, which returns our header views view and then we set the string value of that to whatever you want um, uh, this, the display string value to be of that header view and then uh, the next line is unnecessary but you can say like set min width or set max width of the column um, and then we have uh, we're actually adding adding that column to the table view by doing table view add table column the column um, and then this is the line I showed you just a few seconds ago. Scroll view, set document view, table view. And what that actually does is, um, first of all, it adds the table view as a subview of the scroll view, but also makes it so that the table view takes up the whole scroll view. Um, and these two lines are pretty important. First of all, we need to set the data source. That's the most important because that will actually populate our table with our data. Um, uh, on each individual row or cell if we had multiple cells and then we also set the delegate and the delegate is just for handling events such as like clicking and blah 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 and finally um, we uh, add uh, scroll view to the content view defined up here um, and down here we have our two required data source methods um, you need if you set the data source of your table view, you have to define these within um, the class that says the data source. In this case, we have self as our data source, so we define these two methods within this same class. The first one is number of rows in table view, 
um, which has a parameter CP table view a table view and it returns an integer so in that case we just return data count which is the total number of objects within our data CP array and then the next method returns um, an ID in this case we're going to be returning a string because each individual object within our array is a string and we do table view uh, the parameters uh, CP table view and then object value for table column uh, a CP table column and then row which is an integer and in this case we're not do we don't have multiple cells so we can just return um, the object at index of the row index passed here so data object at index row index and return and we retur return that so let's let's go ahead and test that within Safari so you can see here we have our, our column and it's resizable because we didn't say otherwise and we do have alternating row colors I'm not sure if you can see that you should be able to and we have our two rows so now I'm selecting each row but we don't have anything happening how do we handle that event um, or you can also say that I'm selecting different cells but since we only have one cell you know it, it's all in, it's all in diff different rows so now we're actually going to implement a, a CP table view delegate method. Um, I'm writing a blog post about the CP table view delegate methods right now, and you can uh, check that out a little bit later. But we need uh, probably one of the most important delegate methods is the table view selection did change. So that anytime um, the user selects a different cell or row or whatever, uh, it'll it'll send you some kind of notification as a CP notification. So let's start off by just saying, let's alert to make sure that this delegate method is actually be, being called. I'll refresh, select it, and we can see that um, uh, we have our alert happening. And now, uh, since we have a CP notification um, variable being passed to us in that delegate method, let's go ahead and check out the documentation for CP notification. And so we can we can actually get uh, so we can we can grab the notification objects and through that you can get the um, the row index or or column index that has been selected. So I'll have more about that particular thing later in my blog post so you can check it out at connorsemin.com. Um, I hope you like this tutorial and once again uh, you can just get more in-depth information through my upcoming uh, cappuccino blog post. Thanks for watching.